Hello everyone and welcome to Cafe New Canadians. Cafe New Canadians is a virtual chat series that we bring to you every week and we discuss issues that matter to newcomers, immigrants, refugees and international students in Canada and all those who plan to move to Canada someday. Cafe New Canadians is brought to you by New Canadians. We're a TV and web show and we include content around immigration, settlement, education, small businesses, anything that matters to this target audience. And we bring our content to you. We air our episodes on Omni TV. That's where you can watch us if you're joining uh, within Canada. And you can also check out our content on our website as well as our YouTube channel. That's where you will find some of our pieces too. Today, we would be discussing something uh, which is a topic around uh, newcomer arts. We would be exploring what the art scene is like in Canada and exploring it, what is it like through the immigrant eyes. I'm Shruti Dargan, I'm the moderator for tonight's session, and I'm so pleased to welcome four amazing guests who would be joining us. We're joined by Martha Sulek. She is a multi-instrumentalist who would be joining us. There's also Sari Alesh, he is a violinist. Aitak Soharatilab, she is a visual artist, uh, a ceramic artist, who would be talking about her work too. Also an art educator and an art administrator. So someone who can actually educate us a lot about how the industry functions. And uh, she's able to connect us to so many other uh, newcomer artists. And we've got Mirna Chesin. She is a visual artist too, a photographer, and would be talking about her work. So once again, a uh, very warm welcome to all of you joining us and to our panelists. Just before we start talking to them, I'd like to remind you that uh, we, you of course have the option to ask us questions. Uh, anything that you'd like to know about the arts industry in Canada, what is it like for immigrants to move into it? Tell us, uh, ask us your questions within the Q&A tab on Zoom. If you're joining us on YouTube, where we're actually live streaming this webinar, you can also ask us your questions in the chat box. With that, let's begin the session. Uh, very warm welcome to our panelists. How are you doing? Hi. So Hi, let's everybody. Begin. Hey, Marina. Uh, let's begin uh, with a round of introductions. And uh, just so that our audience is able to understand more about you, learn about your craft, a uh, little bit that I shared, but more that they would want to know about you. And how about we begin with Marta? A little bit about you, where you moved from uh, to Canada. When did you move? Tell us about your craft as well. Okay, hello everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. It's, uh, I'm really honored. Uh, so my name is Marta Solik and I am a multi-instrumentalist, what it means. So I finished um, cello, classical cello in a music academy. I get the master degree from my classical cello. And then I decided to continue my studies and I did another master degree in world music instrument, me fiddle. So they're very unique. And I will tell a little bit more about them later. I came to Canada in 2017 uh, from Poland. So I am from Poland. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. A little question for you. So you said uh, you talked about your music, but is that something you always wanted to pursue? Did you always want to be a musician or was there something else that you were trying to do earlier? <laughs> Well, honestly, my mom and my dad, they met in Philharmonia, and then my mom's dream was for her daughter to play on the cello, and I hated it because I, I wanted to play piano. And then, uh, but I I can, I loved playing cello as well, and when you play cello, you have to study piano as well, so I had a win-win here. And then when I... Um, when I was learning more and more, I knew this is one of the things that I want to do that I love to do. I, of course, have a lot of uh, interest in the photography and older art and, uh, and writing. I'm also writing my own uh, lyrics. And so and my spectrum is pretty big, but definitely music is the most important. And I was working towards being a musician all my life. So definitely, yes. <laughs> Amazing. Mirna, let's move on to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself um, within Canada and your journey a little before that too. Um, I'm a Venezuelan-born Canadian already, new Canadian visual artist. Um, passionate about uh, telling stories through photography that I consider is like uh, the camera is my, the eye that connects with my inner world. 
So um, I, I studied architecture and in the middle of the career, I discovered photography, drawing, and I entered a Biennale in my hometown of Maracaibo, Venezuela and earn her first prize, and that decided my path in the career. Uh, so for a while, I tried to continue with architecture, but there was a moment that I had to choose in the between then. And since the, that was at the end of the 80s, so I you would say that my fine art, um, art photography career started with that Biennale, and then every other year I used to do exhibitions and uh, around Venezuela. Sometime I, they went to Italy, went to Uruguay, went to um, Canada even once. And um, shortly before immigrate to Canada in 2011, I was, um, I was awarded a gold medal for my achievement in, in Venezuela in the media. And um, since I moved to Canada in 2011, uh, Everything I do is related with the, or, or, or my work reflects on my experience as a migrant. It has to do with uh, cultural grief, with um, uh, the need to, to build a sense of belonging, the uh, routine. And um, more recently, I've been working in, um, in the other experience, which is uh, loss to death and grief. And um, and I'm currently working in a, in a memorial art project, which is, has been um, part of the art war TO, the year of the public art in Toronto. And my project is called Elegy for the Souls on Whole. And uh, I don't know what I can do that's interesting the others. Uh, well, I've been very grateful because I have received a grant and mentorship from Toronto Art Council, for Ontario Art Council, for Toronto Art Foundation. I'm a member of Arts Etobico. Um, being a, this has been a very, very um, uh, well experienced uh, working with communities. Oh, and by the way, I immigrated because I'm the um, LGBTQ community and me and my wife wanted to be part of this inclusive um, country. Thank you for sharing that with us. And, you know, you said that uh, you weren't sure as to what to share. That will be interesting. I think everything that you shared is just so interesting. And I'm sure the viewers Thank would you. want to know about you and learn more about, you know, the important work that you're doing. Uh, Thank, to also Thank highlight you, the Thank you for having me here. This is uh, an honor and a great opportunity. I'm always willing to talk about uh, how can that is the way to help others that are coming in the same, to the same path. So thank you for this uh, chance to share my experience. You're welcome. Thank you to all of you to, for joining us here. And uh, we hope that you know, this grateful. would be a very exciting session wherein we can share lots of tips with the viewers too. Sari, uh, let's uh, learn a little bit about you. Tell us uh, what brought you here and when did you move to Canada? What has it been like since? Okay, first, thank you so much for inviting me to join you today. It's a great to meet uh, all of you. I uh, came to Canada in 2016 um, as a refugee. I am originally from Syria. I'm now a, Can a Syrian Canadian uh, violinist. So I have been in Canada over five years now. Uh, by the way, I live in Victoria, British Columbia. Uh, I used to play with the Syrian Symphony Orchestra. I'm a professional violinist. I studied classical music uh, at the University of Damascus in Damascus, Syria. Um, I trained to play only classical music. So coming to Canada um, gives me a lot of uh, experience to explore different styles of music. Um, I'm so grateful to be here today and uh, I am playing different styles now so it's amazing to keep playing and learning different styles. 
Well, thank you for sharing that. And of course, uh, with this panel tonight, uh, it's it's so exciting that all of you are into different facets of the art industry. And, you know, there's so much different uh, things that you can talk about, uh, the various crafts, how it functions. And uh, that brings me to you, Aitak. You're, you're someone who is doing a bit of both, is someone who is a visual artist herself, but also one who is facilitating that for so many other uh, newcomers and immigrants within Canada. So let's hear a little bit about you too as well. Sure, thank you. Um, well, my name is Aitak Sorahi Talab. I'm originally from Iran. Um, and I moved to Canada, I immigrated to Canada in 2013, end of 2013. And what brought me here was mostly politic. Um, as an artist, as a woman, um, as a free person. Um, and um, yes, I intended to be an artist. So I trained um, as a visual artist, uh, I studied um, B, uh, my BA and my MA back home. Um, both are in fine art. Um, I'm, I am continuing my PhD here right now um, in environmental and urban change uh, and working in public art and environmental art um, these days. Uh, I'm more uh, into research uh, focusing on public art um, because I used to do public art back home, um, a very specific form of art, which uh, we call uh, bas relief, which is a French word, or ceramic mural. I can share just um, quickly. This is uh, one example of my work that is back in Iran. Uh, when I moved to Canada, um, I switched to um, small sculptures. So um, I started to do, uh, again, clay work and ceramic work. I'm a professional ceramic artist. Um, the recent series that I'm working on are, um, I call it the Rhino I Know. This is one of them. And this is the other one, which are a series that um, the theme is immigration and the rhinos who travel around the world. Um, and to me, they are all the rhinos that I know. And um, each of them has a specific name. For example, the one with the cloud has the name, um, the rhino I know, uh, the dreamer. So yeah, this is the last series that I, I am still working on since two years ago. And um, as you mentioned, I wear another hat as an art administrator. Um, my husband and I uh, registered a nonprofit organization based on our experience back home that uh, we had an NGO uh, working with, here we are working with newcomer artists, peer newcomer artists. Um, and our organization's name is AIRSA. Right. Well, thank you to all of you, uh, Aitak, uh, for sharing your a little bit about your uh, experience and journey and uh, the stories that you would like to, of course, share through the rhinos that you've created. And, you know, the different characters that you have uh, reflect the immigration journeys of so many people who moved to Canada, uh, whether artists or not. But and that's why I'd like to my next question to all of you would be to understand a little bit about your newcomer journey. So let's put your professions on a side for a bit and hear from you. Uh, what do you remember of your initial days, uh, initial week or month, the first experience that you had when you just moved to Canada? Uh, Sari, let's begin with you. So for me, the first challenge uh was when I arrived in Victoria was uh, English language. So at that time I didn't speak English. My English was really poor. And uh, yeah, it was very challenging at the beginning just to understand what people were saying to me, just try to, you know, 
language is the most important part. So uh, I focused at that time uh, only on improving my English, learning English language. So I um, took courses at the University of Victoria. I studied academic English for one and a half years. And uh, beside that, I was uh, trying to introduce myself through my music. So I remember the first day I wasn't able to communicate well with people, but I was able to play, play them some music. So it was easier to play music more than speak English. And uh, yeah, I remember at that time um, I was thinking, what kind of music should you play, you know? Um, uh, I noticed that there are different music styles here. From the first week, I start exploring different styles and my friends start to show me, look, we have this uh, Irish music, we have the Celtic, you know, Celtic music in general. Um, I went to the opera, I listened to the classical music. So it was so interesting just to, you know, ex explore the the city and the Canadian culture. Uh, I also learned about the Canadian food. So the very first thing was very different from my culture is the dinner time. Like yeah. uh, in the Middle East, uh, we used to have dinner in uh, late time. And the first day I arrived here, I remember I had my dinner at five uh, o'clock, 5 p.m. And this is, was a little bit early for me, so I thought, okay, <laughs> you, you're going to get used to have dinner at early time. So, uh, yeah, and uh, beside that also, uh, the food was a little bit different. You know, each culture has different kind of food, so it yeah. was amazing, you know. And uh, I think food, language, and music were the first step to communicate with people. So rightly said, you know, I mean, uh, dinner time is something in so many cultures, so many different countries, uh, 5.30 is almost like a snack period after lunch, so it's somewhere mid your lunch and dinner, and these things do take some time to get used to. Uh, Aitak, what was your experience like? Anything that you particularly liked or uh, did not like so much or took some time adjusting to? Um, well, as um, Sari mentioned, um, I the, the first thing I noticed here was the different tastes uh, of art. I expected that, obviously, but um, I didn't know that my practice as a ceramic muralist is completely unknown here. And um, I remember that I wanted to pursue that career, but um, I was not successful. So far, I'm not successful to find um, a place, a voice as a ceramic muralist here in Canada. I applied for grants even, um, but uh, because this practice is rare at least, um, I was um, not able to, to pursue that. Um, in, and the other thing, um, well, there are a lot of things. <laughs> culturally, so culturally, would you say there was something that stood out to you? Um, culturally, um, well, I cannot mention anything specific right now, but I think um, working with different art organizations here mm -hmm. is very different from what we used to work back home. And the main difference is um, here, there are a lot of art organizations that work privately or as a nonprofit, but um, back home, everything was related to the government. That was the main differentiation between them. Meena, for you, you shared, you know, the reason for you to move here was very different from the others. Uh, when you moved to Canada, did you feel an immediate change in how people approached the LGBTQ community or uh, you felt a sense of freedom or the way that, you know, you were able to express yourself more freely? Tell us about oh, your initial thoughts I've, when you moved here. 
Well, absolutely. I moved here in June, and uh, at the end of that month, it was it was the the pride, and and it was a huge, a huge pride um, parade, and and I I I, I felt that I find my place and my wife as well. So we uh, since then we have been always in in, in uh, part of the parade, but. The scene is uh, over the years is um, is getting bigger, and now we have the, since three years or four years ago we had the Pride Month, and uh, and we had the International Pride War War International Pride um, Parade here. So I have been uh, I have been um, witnessed all this, and so um, since the very beginning we felt embraced. Actually, we. We were living together for a thirteen g for ten year when we came, and we were. I, I came here because of my wife is younger than me because I didn't apply for. I, I always say that I'm the zero on the application because I was an artist. As an artist, you don't have that much point, but she is an engineer and she's younger. So, but because she said she is my partner. I was treated equally. So I'm very grateful from the very beginning. But being said so, it was in a, like a honeymoon. There was the odd, of course, that I didn't anticipate, like uh, the cultural barriers, like uh, my English was not that good. I imagine even as I was a student and that I have to study it again. And it still is not good. <laughs> and I already accept it. Um, and the other is that I was like um, maybe in a comfort zone in my country because of my age. I was I got some awards and that and and when you move to a new country like here, you are a newcomer, like a newborn. And and what is said in the paper or what you show, you have to prove it. And you are there is a lot of resources around there and there is a lot of organization, but. Better don't show it, better write it down. And you have to know. And if you don't know how to write in English and this is not your language, that is the first obstacle you find as an artist. Uh, so over the year, that has improved. More and more organizations are, are uh, filling the gap that was between the resources and the newcomer that need to get there, but they have the cultural bar, the language, the writing, the 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 the, the lot of things is, is like a, the organization or ITAC go, is one of the ones that came to that to fill that gap. And um, and uh, being the said that even even it was difficult it was difficult um, there are there the resources so uh, we can continue to talk about this uh, around, but uh, uh, any 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 change in experience in life is something to teach you and and take from you the best. And if you are an artist, that is a that is a very good opportunity to take advantage of that. A crisis that I had of the already. Yeah. So we can. And your craft too, you know, the skill that you have is uh, so apt when it comes to being able to show your experience and, you know, being a photographer to be able to capture that and the different things that are happening around you, whether it is a cultural difference or uh, things that you see around you to be able to reflect the experiences of so many other people. Uh, it's, it's such a talent that you have, and I'm sure you've been able to do that in so many different ways. There's, some, there's a point you raised, and I will come back to that, which is about um, you being an artist, and you said you don't get too many points for that, but your wife is an engineer. And I definitely want to dig deeper into you know what the profession is like in the arts. But before that, let's hear from Marta. Um, what was it like? So tell me about the first day that you arrived in Canada. What was it like? What was going on in your mind? Uh, so, well, uh, if it comes to the dinner time, I had a completely opposite experience because in Europe, my mom and 
the culture is like that, that you eat like a king for breakfast, you need energy, right? Then for a lunch, you eat dinner, basically that's your dinner. And then on the dinner time, you don't eat because you you don't need that energy in the evening, right? So that was the first thing I gained like maybe five kilograms because I was eating dinner late time. For me, five is late. I know for you, maybe sorry, Ned, but for me, it was like, whoa. So, so yeah, that was the first thing. And of course, the food is much different. Like the Poland is famous from like a good food. And, and here I just have a feeling that it's, I didn't like it so much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's just, uh, but it's, you know, that the first the impression, what, um, what I really love that everyone, and that was the main reason I came here that everyone is really open everyone is really kind and uh in the beginning i i knew how to speak in english uh, you know and i was like i was traveling the world with my band one second and another and i was thinking oh i, I can move anywhere i will be just fine i can adapt anywhere and kind of that would be so easy and i gotta say like first year i was so depressed even though everyone is so kind but like when you land and it's not a tour that you stay for a month or two and then you go back to your home. It's actually you're changing all your life. And even though everyone is so kind and the country is so welcoming, it was really hard on me because I, I felt like I left my, like all my friends, all the culture, the things that you will never thought you will miss, I was missing. So I, I, that, was, that was really hard and I had to re, rewrite myself and Okay, I'm playing, I'm a cellist, classical cellist, but the classical industry and the cultural, cultural or maybe industry, and that, I, I will name it like that, it's, um, it's focused on the big cities, in the big cities. So in Europe, like I have orchestra every 30 kilometers, right? It's professional one. So there is so many opportunities for musicians and for artists. I came here and great, I have Toronto, Montreal, and then I moved a little bit back north and and I was like, <laughs> I was like, what to do? I had no idea what to do because of course there's a lot of arts and there's a lot of artists, but like particularly for my profession as a cellist, I like I can search for a job in Toronto, but here I can be a teacher, but there's no orchestras I can join. I joined two orchestras that they're higher like they're inviting musicians to play, but they're not paying them. And for the paying orchestras, you really like the one, one violinist told me, well, you're new here. Maybe when you're going to sit here for 10 years, maybe you're going to get some better place. But if you're too good, it's not good. If you're too bad, you're not going to get it. So it was difficult for me. So I, I'm lucky that I didn't focus only on one thing. As I said, mentioned before, I have a lot of big interests and different kind of instruments and styles I'm playing. So I was able to find myself in this industry, but um, it was uh, from one hand, it was wonderful, welcoming, warm. And from the other hand, it was really scary, depressing. And uh, uh, it is it is hard, and if someone tell me immigration is not it's easy, well, it's not. Even if it's you have not. degree, even if you if you have someone you're coming, even if you if you know someone, this is a big big step, and you really have to just re rethink rethink who you are, what you want to do, who you are again, and and start from the beginning, which is very hard. It is hard, right? Yeah. You know, something okay. that you shared here is I could see everybody else on the panel nod and, you know, agree with you here. And uh, Mirna, I'd come back to you to learn a little bit more. You know, each of you actually shared some challenges in. So it wasn't like what you were doing earlier before you moved to Canada was completely not available here. I mean, I, I, I do recall you sharing that, you know, uh, mural work here was not something that was as popular. So that, that was a challenge for you to overcome. But besides that, what is it like to be in a situation wherein people understand what you do or have a little bit of knowledge about what it is, uh, but you and you're expected to move to a different country, reinvent yourselves or, you know, restart your careers here and not be able to find the opportunities. I'm sure it's frustrating, but I'd like to know a little bit more about that part of your life. What was it like and what were the 
specific challenges and how you were able to kind of tackle those. Uh, Mirna, something, one, one thing that really stood out in your journey that you would call a challenge and what did you do about it? Uh, I totally agree with what Marta said. I mean, and you feel guilty because everybody is so cool. You just feel like a welcoming. It's, it's any, and you don't feel like a, an alien because everybody is from another part. So you, you, and you are grateful in my case. I mean, I finally can be free to be myself, to be my choice. We, we cannot hide our life. But on the other hand, um, you miss your country. You miss your family. So there is something that I didn't know that existed that was the migrant grief. And for a long time, I, for, I felt so depressed, especially during winter time. I live in a Caribbean country and I didn't expect it. That was so hard, not because of the cold, it's because of the darkness. And, and then that's, and you put the, all of these and you feel that's of routine and you feel this cultural barrier and you feel that, okay, you have a previous life, but now you are new here. You are new, you have to reinvent it yourself. Everything you have in the paper or your credential or that, um, I'm afraid that you know are so famous on a, on a star, uh, you have to prove it and you have to study, you have to learn. And for me, what is what the first that I did was to took my camera and start to take photograph of my neighborhood. That is is a become an our series that is now in. Um, Harbor Front Center in Sugar Beach in a, in a um, uh, holding construction. Yep. That photograph was my journey to, to try to, to fall in love with my new country to say, oh, this is another thing. My hometown has a lake, a huge lake. And I say, I have a lake here too. And this is beautiful. And this is not polluted. This is um, people enjoying. So I took this series of photograph about the um, about about the 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 fact that that I need to love the place I live. This is the sex division where the sun rises. That is um, a name for the place when I start my new beginning and like a new dawn, because you have to start over. I mean, I like I find out that this new comedies, new burn, and somehow you are new, you are new. And, and well, I think the challenges always make us grow. And I'm grateful that this time, 10 years later, I'm grateful that that happened, but you've suffered in the way and you suffered a lot. And, and what it did the difference was the mentorship program for me because it, it, it gave me the tools to write down my ideas, to, to work in the progress, and uh, to, to get along with the practices in this country, to know the sector, to navigate the cultural area and find the resources. That's what, that did the huge difference, that did, did it for me. Sari, coming to you, uh, you shared, you know, one of the first things for you was a uh, language barrier and you worked hard to kind of overcome that. Uh, besides that, what would you say was either a challenge or a barrier for, that you faced? How were you able to overcome that or tackle that in a different way? And uh, if, you know, there are any professional achievements that you'd like to share with us through that journey? I mean, also kind of what... Uh... Marta said, I faced the same challenges. For me, as a professional violinist, I studied uh, five years at the university, you know, classical music. I played a lot of concerts uh, in Europe, uh, professional festivals in Germany, in Italy. And uh, when I arrived here, um, there is only one professional orchestra in uh, Victoria, Victoria Symphony. And uh, the, the opportunities were very limited. So yes, you have to start again from the beginning, from zero. So the only way I thought about that, what can you do, you know? Uh, the opportunities were very limited. Uh, therefore, I had to do something different. 
and then I uh, I have a band now, um, Canadian uh, musicians, and we play different kind of musics. My friends now play Arabic songs, uh, English songs. We play different styles, Irish, uh, Celtic. We play some jazz. You know, I'm still exploring different styles. So for me, it was okay. You wanna play something different in order to uh, show yourself here. And at the same time, I thought, okay, I, I don't want to play classical music as all the Canadian musicians, you know? I need to do something different. I have the Middle Eastern uh, feeling in the music. Why do I need to copy other musicians? And for me, I thought maybe this is a great opportunity to start again with my real uh, emotions. I really thought I don't need to copy other musicians, you know? Uh, actually, you know, when I was playing with the symphony, we always used to play classical concertos, symphonies. In my opinion, it was just copy. Each one is copy each other, you know, like, um, okay, you have your own feelings, um, but you always should uh, do something different. And uh, yeah, I am still, you know, uh, every day I try to get some um, different music that can attract people, you know. And beside that, I am doing something different to uh, for a living, you know. Uh, I just graduated a few days ago from the education assistant program. Uh, I, I was working before as well with uh, students with special needs. So, you know, I did some music, uh, I did a music project to work with uh, autistic uh, children. So uh, the music uh, project uh, was called the Music Circle. Uh, I designed this short program just to work with kids with special needs, try to uh, involve uh, movements sure. and yeah. uh, feelings at the same time. It was very, uh, very interesting experience uh, for me. And, you know, uh, I think also for Marta and everyone here, in order to live in Canada as a musician, you have to do other jobs, unfortunately. So, yeah. yeah. So something that, you know, all of you highlighted, like Marta talked about um, being able to diversify your uh, profession or, you know, the, the talent that you have to be able to do different things. Uh, Mirna spe specifically talked about, you know, that she took that opportunity right after she arrived over here, she de decided to take those pictures, reflect uh, her own experiences and capture what was happening around her. And you also talked about, of course, unfortunately to have to take up other things on the side, but to be authentic, to showcase your own individuality. Um, so those are just amazing things that you've all uh, been sharing over here with us. Aita, coming to you, was there a particular challenge besides, you know, you said that there wasn't much of a recognition for uh, your field of uh, being a muralist. Uh, would, would you say something, a mural artist? Would you, besides that, was there a challenge or something that you would like to highlight over here or talk about your work? Uh, yeah, um, um, <laughs> again, there are a lot of things that I wanna share, um, but um, I wanna mention the language part that people brought up. Uh, I had a bit different experience and I still have after eight years Whenever I meet, sometimes, not always, um, I meet a um, local person, they ask me, wow, how do you speak English? Like, <laughs> how do you learn English? Which is funny, like, <laughs> they don't, <laughs> sometimes they don't realize that this is not a very good question. Yeah. Um, or, you know, the questions like this, um, but um, in general, about my art practice, um, as I mentioned, we all adapt, right? Um, we change, we alter a little bit, we shift a little bit from one practice to one. Um, maybe we change the theme sometimes, we change um, the technique or something sometimes, I think. 
Um, everybody mentioned that very um, correctly. I did that um, from mural to, to sculpture. And um, that was, yeah, this is one of the other thing in Iran, um, which is 30 meters yeah. in width. Um, it's, a, it's a big project. Um, but yeah, um, nowadays I'm focusing, as I told you, on researches. Um, and the other thing that people mentioned here was uh, working as an artist, you cannot make a living from art, which is so true. Um, but back home, we, I think we all had different experience. Like we could make money through art and um, the culture that you work as an artist, as a volunteer all the time, or as a, you know, practitioner um, that doesn't need to, I don't know, doesn't need to eat, doesn't need to travel, doesn't, uh, that's, that's a bit shocking yeah. for me. So if I were to ask you also, because, you know, we talked about it initially that you, you don't another hat, which is of an art educator and an administrator. Um, in your opinion, what would you say is the arts industry in Canada open to, you know, um, giving those opportunities to newcomers? Is it truly diverse and inclusive and multicultural in the entirety? What, what would you say? being an artist yourself and also someone who, you know, understands the intricacies of how the industry functions. What would your, be, uh, your answer be here? Yeah, we basically started this organization based on the lack of information that we couldn't find here. Um, for example, um, as I mentioned before, there are a lot of art organizations, but when you come to the country, there are not a lot of information about them. Um, and even the settlement agencies, they don't know anything about art. My own experience, <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. They don't know about it. Yeah, so my own experience, I went to one of these immigrant um, organizations, not artistic one, um, and they said, would you like to consider to change your work, to change your job? So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is funny, right? And, yeah, um, so but it is like, it is funny, but it is at the moment, it was not funny at all. Yeah, of it's unfortunate. Honestly, it is, it isn't something that one would expect. As you said, uh, in everyone, in all of your home countries, you had this profession. That is what was your core profession. That is what got you that recognition. Uh, and that talent was appreciated. Mm hmm yeah, exactly. So we decided to register this organization and we worked hard. Um, and I still work hard for this organization. Um, fortunately, um, we have good name. I don't know, we, we have good connections right now. And we were able, before COVID, we were able to have some workshops or exhibitions. I curated two exhibitions for newcomer artists so far. Um, and yeah, people are welcoming. People, people are willing to help, but um, the system is not very welcoming, I would say. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. And if I may add, you know, this is one of the reasons why uh, we at here uh, at Cafe New Canadians also, we try and have these engaging conversations about different professions, different communities, and all those different issues that matter to this audience. And like you all said over here today, that maybe when you moved over here, those were a few certain challenges that you faced. And we hope that through this discussion today, uh, the people who are joining us right now in the session, who would be watching this session later, would be able to learn so much more. And anyone in their own home countries deciding to move to Canada would also be able to understand from your experiences and possibly not make either those mistakes or just be better informed before they move and understand mm -hmm. those challenges. So let's let's try and do something here uh, to tell people more about you know, your work, yeah. your culture. And uh, Marta, coming to you, 
you're a multi-instrumentalist. You're also someone who plays an instrument that nobody else in Canada does. Um, tell us about that. Let's do some, let's have that educational component here too and tell the viewers what that instrument is. And if you could maybe just strum it slightly for us too. Uh, yes, of course. I will happily do that. I will try to be very short because I could talk about it for hours. I believe all of us could talk about our work forever. Uh, but what is really unique about this instrument? Um, I, both of them. Maybe I'm, I'm just going to show them to you. So first of them, it's a plot fiddle. It's a Polish instrument that was reconstructed 40 years ago, and it was founded in the ground. So it's an instrument from the 16th century. And wow. all the carps were, you know, it, it, it survived. Of course, the strings didn't survive, but... Uh, my professor reconstructed that four years ago. So that's the plot fiddle from 16th century. And, and then this is the um, Bill Corai wow. Sutra. The, the sign here, you see, we can, uh, this is the sign that was coming from uh, ancient e Egypt, right? And, and more and more and more. This is very popular in the architecture in Poland, in the mountains, but this instrument actually comes from the East. Uh, this is... Uh, all the all these instruments are the knee fiddles from the group of the knee feeders. So my second master degree is actually not only the Polish instrument, but the knee fiddles. Like, for example, the Greek lira that I also have. Um, it's a knee fiddle as well with the sympathetic strings, right? And all of these instruments um, have a similar technique, which uh, we call it a fingernail technique. So what is actually very interesting that as in Canada, all the culture blends during the centuries, right? The culture was blending in Poland, in Europe and all around the world, right? Because the wars and uh, borders were changing. So the Poland was actually only one country in Europe that, um, that had this fingernail technique that comes from the East actually, right? It comes from the... Um, from Turkey, we are we are we are thinking because the, in Turkey we have the Turkish Comanche, right? And in the 16th, 17th century, we have many wars with Turkish <laughs> Turkey. So, like we, the, the influence of the culture come from there. Uh, there is uh, even in Poland, those instruments are very rare. I was actually the first uh, person that did the master degree in this instrument. So. I can uh, say it is not really popular in Poland as well. There's around 50, up 50 people who are playing those instruments. Uh, they were forgotten just because the violins were louder and easier because this technique, you know, I, I have to jump between the strings, right? So I'm not pressing it. I just have to, it's just like also the Indian Sarangi and, and Morin Hur, right, from Mongolia and, and Erhu from China, all these instruments. Oh no, actually Erhu, they're touching, sorry. They're not playing with the nails. But all of them are knee fiddles, right? So me, like, I don't want to be too long, but just to kind of give you the, sure. uh, what I do in my art. So I'm trying to incorporate this ancient sound to the, contemporary music to my music I'm writing my compositions I'm creating the bands I'm trying to bring it back to life basically so when you mentioned I think about the that your work is not known here well my instruments are not known even in Poland right who wants to listen to that like people are looking at me what is this like what are you doing with this I'm like oh, I just love it right it's just I love this, and so, so I'm sorry I don't have my professional setup, but you will just have a glimpse of the mm, raw sound of this instrument. Okay, just give me one second here, and uh, I will be right. Got to tune it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thank <laughs> you. 
Wow. Thank you. That was just brilliant. Yeah. And, you know, thank I could you. see the passion while you were performing. And thank you so much for showing us all of these different yeah. instruments, for educating yeah. us about it. And we can only hope that, you know, through this, and it's such amazing work that you do. It's beautiful to hear to this. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Thank you so much. I, I hope you like it. This, this tune was actually also from the 16th century. So I try to blend the centuries in, in this speech. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you know, you so time. far, uh, we've, we've had a conversation about each of your journeys. We've also had a chat about what the experience was like, those initial days, weeks and months, what it was like, some of the challenges. But now let's also get into helping others. So the challenges that you faced, the barriers that you faced, how you were able to overcome those you've shared. But I'd like to ask you a few questions. If there's particularly something, I think I'll come to you here now. Uh, if there was something that you did wrong earlier and you had an opportunity to change that now, what would it be? A quick answer there. Uh, I will probably I will probably apply for the permanent resident before I came here because I was I spent two years without being able, you know, without war permit, without anything. I couldn't work. And I was just, I couldn't play. I was devastated. And I just, I didn't realize this whole process will take that long. And I, I thought it's safer to do it from here. But if you have a chance to apply, maybe through some agency or, you know, just to avoid the situation that you will be sitting here without work permit, without being able to work, because, well, what are you going to do? How are you going to survive, right? So that, that's yeah. the thing. So definitely. Yeah. I thought was there anything different that you wanted to share here? Yeah, I would not go to any of those classes that they referred me to. Um, like the, those settlement agencies, they referred me to an architecture bridging program, which was the closest one to art because they didn't have any. But um, I spent uh, almost two months every day going to those bridging programs. I wouldn't go. Uh, I would um, um, advise people to just um, look for their job and continue what uh, they know. Don't learn anything new as a, as a professional artist because they know a lot. They know enough. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, from you, um, any, any learning that you would like to share uh, I saw that, you know, while Marta was playing, you had an instrument in your hand too. Was it something you wanted to show us or? Uh, yes, I actually, I, I think probably Marta knows these instruments. This instrument is called uh, Viola d'Amore. Oh, man. So this wow. is a blind uh, woman. So uh, this instrument uh, belongs to 17th, 18th century. It has 14 strings, uh, seven on the bridge and seven strings here down. I don't know if you can see them. They are sympathetic strings yeah. for resonance. So yeah, this is Baroque instrument and I, uh, I bought it like three years ago and I, uh, I was planning to play Arabic music on it. So uh, I'm not gonna be able to play on it today because I will need different setting for my sound equipment. But you can find uh, some of my music on YouTube channel, Sari Alesh. You're going to hear this instrument. And uh, yeah, you know. I Any challenge or, or, yes, from your journey, would there be something reflecting on, you know, your initial days or the journey so far? Uh, would there be a learning that you would like to share with the viewers or something that you wish you knew before you moved? So for me, if I go back in time, the first thing I would do before coming to Canada is to study English language because I really think anyone wants to come to Canada need to study English before. Otherwise, you're going to waste one or two years minimum just to learn the basic language. So, yeah, if I, uh, if I uh, had learned English before, I would uh, have uh, saved a lot of time. So probably this is the, the most challenging part. Mirna, any learning, any tip that you would like to give to our viewers from your yeah. journey? Well, um, uh, over the years, since had uh, changed here for the good. 
uh, that when I came, but uh, I, I think I would uh, maybe uh, study more uh, English at home. I did it, but I, I probably should have been taking the TOEFL to be up before come and maybe take a classes here, how to write in the ground, how to do, because I find out all of this in the, uh, it, it took me a long, longer time. Then the other is you have for, and then this is an advice also for all they are coming. Have your website, your LinkedIn profile, everything done, well done in English. So, and, uh, and, and your social media. At that time, that was not that important, but at this time is basic. And um, also, if you are a person that has had a career in your home country for over the year, maybe you are more than 40 or the 50, be aware that for younger people, it's easy to adapt than, than elder you are. And so maybe you will find out that all your diplomas and all your exhibition and all of this is, it's gonna be uh, difficult for people to, to give you, oh, okay, go ahead now and be prepared to do a second job because you cannot live for art. So I'm a photographer and that is my second art. Um, my income comes from photography and covering and tech events, corporate events. So um, I did it in my country with the uh, industry and I did it here, but it, it, it was easy. It was uh, harder the first time. And the other I have recommend is volunteering. Volunteering in an organization where you can get what you, uh, what you can do for others because it's gonna help you to, to feel you useful, to practice your, your skills and, and start to build a sense of belonging. For me, what's important, very important, and I just regret that I didn't know immediately, but like three years later, volunteering at the Mennonite New Life Center of Toronto, taking photographs of other migrants like me and refugees. And, and then I feel that I was part of it. So that's, I recommend that. Volunteering, give your work. And, and that is make you feel like you are doing something yeah. because of love, because of the others. You shared such amazing tips. Uh, and you know these are the kind of things that would actually, anyone watching this session would at any time, would definitely benefit from. Uh, thank you to all of you for sharing those wonderful experiences and tips. Anything else that you'd like to, besides what Mirna just shared, uh, Marta, Aita, uh, Sari, if there's anything that you'd like to add as a message or a tip, what would your last uh, piece of advice or uh, message be for our audience? Marta? I see you still thinking. So if you'd like yeah, me to come back yeah, to you. Yeah, all right. yeah, maybe, maybe you can come back to me. <laughs> all right, Sari, I'll come to you first. Um, What's your message for the viewers? I agree with uh, Mirna. A volunteering work is so important in Canada. It, uh, you, you're going to get a lot of credit if you do that. So, yeah, I recommend to when you come to Canada, just be yourself. Don't, uh, don't fake it. Don't try to make people, you know, happy. Like, just be yourself. Don't, don't be authentic. Uh, don't act that uh, something not to you or yourself otherwise you're not gonna you're not gonna make it you have to be yourself in order to prove yourself yeah uh, marta coming back to you what would your tip be or a message you know it could also just be a motivational message um, that you have something that inspires Newcomers who are moving to Canada, newcomers who are artists too, musicians, performers, what can they do better? Mm -hmm. Definitely reach out to any organization or the organization that you're interested in or they're close to whatever you do. I had a big lag with reaching out to Small World or Labyrinth Ontario, and that it provides me with so many connections and so many opportunities just because I met the right people but I had to put the effort and find this organization, right? So Google, Google it, like, uh, you know, world music organizations in Toronto, whatever it is that you do, Google it, go there, show yourself, smile, say hi, be open. 
don't give up. The most important thing I got to say is many times your idea is going to get slapped. Someone's going to tell you, can you just, I don't know, learn the architecture instead of playing music or doing the sculptures? Well, the, because you're not going, if there is no point, well, no, no, don't give up yourself. We'll fight for your dreams and then uh, make connections, as many connections you can. Be open, don't be afraid to talk. Even if you can't speak, no one will judge you. We all are immigrants here, even like the old people here in my city there. Sometimes I talk to them and say, I'm sorry because for my English, my grammar. And he said, don't worry, baby, we are all immigrants here. My grandpa immigrated here from there and there. So just, just relax and know where you're going and don't give up whatever happens because yeah, the industry is different. You, we got to learn, we got to adjust, but there are so many opportunities waiting for each of us out there this is a big country that is very open. And I think we just have to believe in ourselves and just, you know, push it forward, be ourselves and show what we have yeah. to offer here. And we have to, we have a lot to offer to this country. So yeah, be, yes. go for it. Go for so it. rightly said. Yes, I can yeah. see everyone agreeing with what you said over so, here. Exactly. Yeah. Aita, yeah. coming to you, uh, Please tell us, you know, of course, some great tips have been shared here, but from you, I'd also like to know if there are any resources or um, a mention of any organization that you would recommend for people to reach out to, including yours. Sure. Um, um, if, um, you know, in each um, and every cities in Canada, there are art councils. So um, I would suggest people search um, for art councils in their um, uh, area and art organizations. Um, so by that, and don't be shy. That's the key. We need network here. Um, connect with people through LinkedIn, through Facebook, whatever, Instagram, um, and um, meet with them. This is, this is the thing that I learned here that I would not do back home. <laughs> um, meet with people, have a coffee, tea after COVID, <laughs> of course. Um, but ask your questions, ask for help, ask for advice, um, and connect with the art councils. Thank you uh, to all of you for sharing your experiences, for sharing these wonderful tips. With this, we've come to the end of our discussion, but we can't end the session without uh, a little bit uh, of a performance from Sari here too. Uh, Marta has been kind enough to play a little bit of a tune over here for us. And now we would uh, welcome Sari to also play a tune for us. Sari, tell us what are you about to play and uh, go ahead with it. Thank you. So I'm gonna show you my electric uh, violin. This is my electric violin. Uh, I'm gonna play a um, fiddle tune uh, called Catharsis. Uh, this tune is uh, written by Natalie McMaster. She's a Canadian, famous Canadian fiddler. And she's so inspiring to me. Um, I was uh, listening to her music and I thought it would be nice today to play something new to me and uh, show you what uh, I can do. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
Lovely. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank, Thank you, you Sari. Thank you, Sari. Thank you. This is this is just beautiful. Yeah. And with this, uh, let's let's now, of course, uh, wrap up this session. Thank you once again to all of you uh, sitting over here today. You've not just shared your experiences, but we've also managed to actually give our audience uh, the feel of a concert right from their homes. So we hope everyone enjoyed the session. Uh, this was part of Cafe New Canadians. Uh, we talked about newcomer arts experiences over here, and. Uh, just like this, in Cafe New Canadians, we talk about issues that matter to this target audience of newcomers and immigrants. And to stay updated about our sessions, please connect with us. For a while, we will be taking a summer break and we will return very soon with new sessions. So to stay updated about those, please check out our different social media channels, sign up for our newsletter, you will get updates and stay updated about, of course, more sessions of Cafe New Canadians and a lot of other content that we have. Uh, Marta was also featured in one of our episodes that we had on, that we aired on Omni TV. You can also find that on our website. So please do check out our content and specifically on YouTube, uh, do subscribe, hit the notification bell and you would definitely get updates about everything that we do. Thank you once again to the panelists and to the audience. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.